it, even if you are not convinced about this model retrospectively, the out of sample predictions since early March uh, 2019, it's now been almost three years, it has been incredibly accurate. I mean, if you look at it, in March 2019, yeah, it was $3,000 when the, or $4,000 when, when this came out. And at that point, I mean, what the model was saying was, no, this, the price today should be uh, closer to eight or $9,000. And that sounds insane because, you know, you're putting out the model saying, hey, I'm predicting Bitcoin's price. The price today is 4,000, but actually the price should be 8,000. So you're starting off making a very bold claim. You're out there saying, yep, the price today is wrong. And my model says 8,000, which is, you know, a great way to, um, a great way to get laughed at. Um, because, you know, here I'm making a prediction and I'm starting off by saying that, you know, Bitcoin's price is wrong in the real world. It should go up. And yet, you know, <laughs> this is the kind of fascinating thing about it is reality obliges. Re reality just went ahead and said, yep, he's right. And we went from 4,000 to 8,000 in a couple of months after your model came out. And so, you know, initially people would have laughed and said, yeah, the model is too high. And then within a few months, people were laughing and saying, yeah, the model is too bearish. And the model is saying 8,000, but the price now is about 13,000. And, uh, you know, th this, is, uh, <laughs> this is just a very bearish model. And then what happens is the price goes back down to 8,000 and then it starts coiling around the predicted price until the end of the that period before the halving and you know we're getting to the period of the halving when the halving was going to happen in may 2020 and we see here you know we're we're arriving at the halving and the price is very close to where the predicted price is so that's when you know some people started to grudgingly accept that maybe this thing has some validity to it and then COVID happens and COVID happens and the price goes from eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 or so all the way down to about uh, 4,000. I think it was the bottom or was it 3,000 and the bottom in uh, March 2020. The, the entire capital market of the entire planet were falling apart. Bonds and stocks and everything and commodities was collapsing. The price of oil was negative. Everything was shut down. You know, all of the world's models of everything collapsed. And it looked like this model was dead in the water as well. You know, if we're going to get a new global recession because of this pandemic, that's going to move the, uh, it's going to bring the price down. We'd have the price, you know, maybe spend the next few years around 3,000 or 2,000. Looks like it's kind of um, invalidated. And yet, immediately, it bounces back and it goes right back to the predicted value of 8,000. But that's when the ha right in time for the halving, when the predicted value begins to rise, you know, because the model is built around the halving. And then we get a few months in which the Bitcoin price doesn't rise as would have been expected. And so we start getting some haters gloating around here, around August uh, 2020, you know, when the price was, you know, uh, the model was predicting 15, 20,000, but the price was still around eight, nine, 10. And then <laughs> around, that's the time when it, we go back up and again, it goes back to the predicted value and then overshoots it. And it starts going almost to the edge of the first uh, standard deviation area into the kind of second standard deviation. And that's when we start getting the haters saying, well, this has been invalidated now because uh, we're going to get the super cycle. We're going to go to the moon and uh, the model is too bearish. And that's, you know, that, that continues up until May 2021 when, you know, the predicted price was somewhere in the range of the 30s but the uh, real price was in the 50s and even 60s. And then <laughs> China ban comes along and the price crashes again. And now the model is invalidated, but because the model is too bullish. <laughs> so you've managed to, I think this is the, the irony that the haters don't get, which is that every year the model, they claim the model is invalidated on the upside and the downside a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> which is just shows how extremely precise it has been. You know, even with all of the movements in the Bitcoin price, ultimately this line, what the model predicts was, you know, in May, 2020, the price is going to keep rising up until around um, the middle of 2021 or late 2021. We've, we, we, the price has followed this. We've 
gone over the old previous all-time high as predicted. And we've stuck in this range, which is absolutely amazing. And I think the really most amazing part of it is what for many people was, uh, you know, this is, this was the invalidation of the model that the price went out of the one standard deviation range after the China ban. But for me, the fact that you have China, which bans this, bans Bitcoin, where um, Bitcoin, the majority of Bitcoin is being mined, perhaps a majority of Bitcoin miners uh, Bitcoin holders might have been in China because, you know, uh, a lot of the Bitcoin exchanges started off in China. If you look in 2013, 2014, the majority of Bitcoin trading was taking place on Chinese exchanges. So most likely we've had a lot of Chinese whales. It's not entirely inconceivable that China had the, maybe not the majority, but the plurality of Bitcoins owned by Chinese people. Um, maybe not so much in 2021, but maybe like 2018, up until 2018, maybe this was the case. And yet, even though that gets criminalized and people in China have to get rid of their coins or sell them abroad or get rid of their miners, still, the worst that we got was that the price slipped out of the one standard deviation error and now it's back into the same range. It's absolutely amazing. It's like a, a horror movie or, or an action movie, right? It, it's, and it's, it's the, especially if you, if you uh, describe it like that or, uh, in, in a sequential way. But it's, you know, the entire reason that we have a model is to protect, uh, to pr to protect our, against our own emotions, right? Because um, I, I know very well how I felt during that entire three-year period. And, and, in a, in a way, the, the, you know that in the depth of the COVID crisis or the China crisis, you feel bearish, very, very bearish. And, and you're tempted to sell everything and uh, I think the world uh, falls apart. But that's when the model saves you, right? And, and, the, and the same thing is true when the model, when, when the price is up, up and everybody is FOMOing. It's, it's especially in the top one, when, when um, Elon Musk tweeted that, 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 uh, Bitcoin tweet and everybody was FOMOing. I was like, "Oh, we were at the at the the high part of the uh, of the standard deviation band, so mm, <laughs> don't get too excited." So even then, you, your greed and fear is sort of tamed by by mathematics, and I I like that so much. Um, um, it, I need it because you cannot invest without without the mathematical guidance, and you will be ruined by your own emotions and by the way i know some some hedge funds it's, it's more than one or two that use this uh, exact model to to do this trade so to to buy when it's at the outer bands at the lower bands and to sell when it's at the uh, at the upper bands so you could if you, if you do it well it's very risky though but you, you could make money uh, trading this thing as well 